Hello and welcome to the Over Shadow Shadowcast with Thomas Anderson and Abigail Moore. Hello again, everybody. You still don't have a catchphrase. You really need to work on that. Hello I don't know again. What, don't, don't know what my catchphrase would be. Hello again. Hello again. Every single time. Come on. I can't think of anything else to say. Ahoy hoy. Uh, I'll get a copyright for Simpsons. That's what Mr. Burns says. When he picks up the phone. Well, ahoy hoy was the... Uh, That's why he says yeah, ahoy so hoy. I, you wouldn't be copyrighted. <laughs> I don't think you could... I don't think they could copyright that. Bienvenue. Welcome. Going to a rendition of Cabaret. No. Okay, right. We'll I'd like on. to also apologise if you hear any rain or wind. It's quite a blustery day here in cloudy, cloudy Scotland. We've had some good weather recently. Um, yeah, we have. Unfortunately. Bank holiday, everybody said it was going to be thunder and lightning. Yes, but thankfully the clouds have returned. I don't have to feel so scared of the sky anymore. Did, did, you, just, <laughs> yeah. did, did you just hear a bird? No, like, I heard children laughing. No, that's a bird. That's a bird, but I heard children no, laughing. No, that was a that was a bird that sounded like it was choking to death. Wait a minute. Oh, so the laughs of babes make fairies, and the laughs of children sound like dying birds. Wow, that must be like the part after the terrible twos, bird killing. Can fives. we? Okay, let's talk about let's stop talking about birds. Okay. So what um, have you been playing this week? I've been playing a little bit more Fallout 4, just to try and eventually finish that. It's my game in the background. I don't know why I wave my hands around like this. It looks like you're casting a spell. Yeah. Stop it. <sighs> this will yeah. not work without a visual representation of what you're doing, just audio. Yeah, that's not going to work. It's like, quick, take a picture. Yeah, that's what I've been doing. You have also been playing multiplayer with me in Halo. Yeah. Uh, I don't really know if there's much to talk about in that because it was just more multiplayer. And we did I have shooting. improved though. Yes, because you you did get. Uh, I I drew with you. Twice. Yes. In fairness, one of those was really tricky for me to get a tie because you you sh you did you st that's like um, you spammed the invisibility thing that's in Halo One. What and do you mean just, I spammed uh, it? You just took it a lot, so you were constantly invisible. And then know your you, strengths yes and then but you had to have good pistol shots to take me out yeah so you did pretty well on that front and i was able to i had to sit up i had to actually sit up <clears throat> like lean forward properly and, and really uh put an effort in to be able to uh, get that tie i am the greatest but i think if you were better or more experienced you would have been able to see that through but I was able to, I was like 7-1 down and it drew 8-8 or something like that. I'm getting better at it. I'm getting better at learning how to play the game, not yeah. or how to use my environment to my advantage. Because mm. I think in that instance, there was a 10 minute time limit. That's why there was a tie. Yeah. And it, I think that was why I had to suddenly set up because I had like three minutes to get some kills. Um, you know, I can, without a time limit, I can probably give you a, a, a reasonably large head start and then yeah because pretty much how it always started off was that you got like a fair few kills in and then it was me trying to rank back up my kill yeah and you would after the start you would get into it a bit more and you'd get some kills back so it then like 15 6 or 15 i think 9. if it was because if it was a new map that i wasn't used to it took me a while to sort of get my hang about where i was going whereas that map was an awful lot smaller yeah. So you picked it up a bit quicker. Yeah, there was that one where it was literally just a room. Yeah, there was a room, there was a couple of platforms and some, like, look, look like tank traps or something like that. Yeah, I just get always get the fear whenever I hear a warthog, because I know if there's a warthog, I'm going to die. Because you'll just run me over. Yeah, in almost any situation, I'll somehow get a splatter kill if there's a warthog there. Yeah. So I'm uh, very bad at those. Apart, well, the one story I did want to tell was, uh, other than congratulating you for... Um, for uh, thank you, handshake. Better. One thing I did want to say was the the funniest splatter kill I got was when I there was a ramp leading up to a platform. <clears throat> it was higher up than the other level. It was like a sort of like staircase, but you could drive a warthog up it. Yeah. And somehow when I was going up it, and I, I went up at an angle, and I thought it's fine. I'll jump from this ramp onto the actual platform anyway because the platform was wider than the ramp. And then what happened was somehow the the warthog started to flip. Um, and I got kicked out, but it flipped towards me. So I got kicked out while it was sideways and it was flipping. So it just basically rolled over on top of me and then fell and killed me. 
So I splatter killed myself with an empty warthog. Well done. I didn't know I could run myself over, um, and I did. I'm very proud of myself. There should be a medal specifically for that. Yeah. Remember once when you were like trying to gloat saying, oh, this warthog's a great uh, barrier, and you were like hiding behind a warthog that was on its side. I still managed to get a headshot on you. Yeah, you did, because uh, you. <laughs> I thought you were standing in front of me, and you weren't. You were standing off to the left. So the, it wasn't a barrier at all. You were essentially standing next to me with the sniper rifle pressed up against my head, and I'm like, hee hee hee, I am hidden. You know, I just didn't know you Bang. were there. And then you took the shot, and you took a good shot. So I got fried and pasted. Thank you. Wasted and sausaged. There was a, f- a fair few times where basically Tommy told me that if I if he had a sniper on me, what I should do is like move but also jump at the same time. Yeah. And I've gotten better at if you doing that, me getting headshots now. Yeah, you do the smart thing of waiting until the person has landed. Yeah. Uh, or you know, like basically what you do is you try and figure out where they're going to be and then shoot there. Yeah. Um, that's a really big step. Just shooting straight at the person. I mean, especially in Halo 1, it doesn't work because the bullets don't quite move the way you expect them to. Yeah. Um, I have gotten a bit smarter with that. But I've also got to get better, getting better at uh, doing other, using other weapons, because there was this really weird map that you chose. And you said at one point, right, I need, you need at least eight people to play this because you were constantly darting in and out of doorways, like like teleporting things. It was one of the really, really big 8v8, so it would have been 16 people, I think. Yeah, but I just remember at one point where you were like following me, I managed to pick up like a rocket launcher and you were like, oh, I'm going to get, oh, oh my God, you've got a rocket launcher. <laughs> yeah, I just fired a rocket launcher and you were trying to snipe me because it was No, no, sniper. I got the fat rocket launcher. I killed you with it. You were following me and I managed to get a rocket launcher and turn around and fire it at you. I think that that was um, the smaller map with the, the invisibility one and the shotguns and the waterfalls. Maybe, I can't really remember. Yeah. I just remember that <clears throat> happened. I yeah. was like, haha. The bigger one was that when you were just fresh off of playing snipers because that's when you get closest to winning. Yeah. And so we tried this and it wasn't on snipers and you kept going to get the sniper that was there. Yeah. Because it doesn't work like power weapons do in later ones. It's just snipers and rockets everywhere. But I've also gotten better at like actually going up to you and like... <clears throat> yes. But in this particular away. instance, you, you didn't know I was behind you and then I sort of let you know I was there so that you would try and snipe me and I fired a rocket at you. And it was very, very far away. It took like five seconds to hit you, but you didn't notice what was happening. And then it just went boom and took your shields off. And you went, ah, and ran away. And I shot into the doorway you were hiding in. And you didn't get me then? No, you, you did because <clears throat> you, you missed the door, remember? And got caught oh, yeah, yeah. bumping up against the wall when the rocket hit the doorway. Yeah, that annoys me. I hate yeah. getting caught. Yeah. But yeah, um, but then there was that one later on with the waterfall. And the uh, invisibility orb and the zippy around yeah. the door. And in that one, you you saw me following you and pick up a rocket launcher and blew me up. Yes. And I just landed next to you and you pointed a rocket launcher at me and I was like, ah. Well, it's the fact that you just kept like, the, uh, it was one of them where you were just like constantly lobbing grenades at me. And I was like, y- y- you're nowhere near me. Yeah. <laughs> you were was... trying a corner. You were, like, throwing them around the corner. Yeah, it was just to wind you up. <clears throat> to get you to panic or go somewhere I wanted you to go. Mm. Anyway, you did very well. Thank you. So, apart from my getting better at the multiplayer missions, or multiplayer games, what do, what do you call those? Not missions, what are they? Just games? They're just multiplayer matches, or matches. games, or uh, custom games. Custom games, yeah. That's the phrase I think that we most commonly use. Are we going to play some more? No, never. We're done with Halo now forever. You make me sad. Mm-hmm. Yes, we will play more. Um, Yay. Hopefully one day we'll be able to record one. Yeah. And that'll be the first time you win and I'll be sitting there crying. Yeah. No, oh, thanks. You want to make me cry? No. Okay. Right, so shall we talk about some, some other Some things? newsy stuff. Yes. Let's talk about some newsy stuff. And the news headlines. I don't have a piece of paper to shake. So we're going to start with um, Anthem. Now, 
This is a little bit of speculation, but there's a lot of belief at the moment in the gaming media sphere that Anthem's player base is gone. I think they're just... If it, if it's not gone, it's, it's depleted quite a bit. Yeah, but it's it's like one of those, one of those movies. Are they under attack? No, they're just gone. And there's a Star Trek episode where that happens. I will take your word for it. It's the one based on the Cold War. Submarine attacks. I've not seen that. Interesting. Anyway, yeah, because um, basically... Xbox's top 49 games, Anthem doesn't feature on it. I mean, it, it begs the question of what person sat there and thought, let's pick 49. Yeah, because oh, the, the the list I saw went up to 48. It didn't go up to 49. Yeah, I know, that list is weird. Uh, so, like, number one is obviously Fortnite, because that's not going anywhere, I don't think, anytime soon. Right. But I think it's one thing that Anthem's not on there, but Star Wars Battlefront 2 is. Yeah, because so is Sorry, yeah. <clears throat> sorry, I was just going to say there, right? But I shouldn't have interrupted you. Please continue. And so is Monopoly Plus. <gasps> you want to play that, don't you? I do. Yeah, you do. I love Monopoly, but I, I can't play the board game with anybody know. because they will stop when they're losing. Oh, you should play with us. I'm just like, just let me win. I just want to bankrupt all of you. <laughs> you should play with us. I think you'd lose, but I think you'd, we don't end the game like that. People just say, like, get up and then just have enough. And I'm like, no, come on. Or do I, oh God, I used to hate this, which was if um, like my sister was losing, my mum or my dad would give them some money. Or, or not, not just so much my sister, but like anybody. If anybody else was losing, they'd give them money. And i go, that's not the point of the game. Uh, no, I don't mind that. No, I do. It weakens your opposition. I know, but I do. All right, okay. I usually like to play on, um, yeah, but see the opposition that I'm going to be left with when you lose. You don't like them very much, do you? So why don't you help me just before you die? Why don't you suicide bomb up against them and give me all your stuff? No, because I'd want to bankrupt you as well. No, if you're going to lose. No, I'm not going to lose. Who says I'm going to lose? Yeah. You've never seen me play Monopoly. I, you don't know my strategies. I definitely think I see why your family don't want to play with you. Why? Because I'm a sore winner. Oh, you're just a sore player, I think, from the sounds of it. Pretty much. Great. Don't even start with Scrabble. Scrabble's another one. Many everybody else see their you can't letter. You can spell. So... I can. You're dyslexic. How the hell do you play Scrabble? I know small words which can rack up quite a bit of points. Right, like chi. Like there's one which is X U, which I I can't remember what it actually means, but that is a word. X me, no, X you. X you. Um, v U as well. I don't know what any of these means. But Neither do I. V A R. <laughs> the one I'm surprised by is Star Wars Battlefront 2. I know, so am I, because it was quite like it, like in the middle a bit. So it was st still quite a lot of people are playing it. Well, you see, I, I'm not entirely surprised by that when I think about it, but I was surprised, like, first reaction. Um, but when I think about it, I'm not that surprised, uh, even though I just said I was surprised. Because I was surprised, but I'm not just now. Because Star Wars Battlefront 2, they've done a lot of work on it. Like the, I think the um, uh, real money bot loot boxes are gone. Right. Um, so the microtransaction element, I think, is gone. It might have been put back in, but I, I think they took it out for a long time. And... Then you've got the fact that they've done a lot of work on the game. So I think yeah. they've altered the progression system to make it better and they've added lots of DLCs to it for free. Yeah. So uh, I think, is it DLC Is it or is it DLCs? Anyway, they've added a lot of those and right. I can see why people would play it because apparently the actual gameplay was fine the whole time. It was the microtransactions that sunk it. Either way, it's bad for Anthem. 
because Anton's gameplay is not good. It's microtransactions aren't great, but it's not the reason. It's its progression system's not great, but it's not the reason. It's the fact that it's got it's boring and there's nothing to do in it. Yeah. I think that's the problem with the fact that nobody's playing Anthem. But the the game that I turned up, the the, the list features Fallout seventy six. Yeah, that's another one. Yeah, but Fallout seventy six was very very low down on that. Yeah, but it was there. It's like like top forty five. Aye, but for Anthem. No, to no, that's 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 wrong. Sorry, like after four, I think it was like number forty five or something like that. But yeah, it says a lot that the fact that Fallout seventy six is on there and not Anthem because the amount of con- controversies I think seventy six has had compared to Anthem is quite substantial. Aye, uh, Anthem's major controversy is that there's not much to do in it and it's kind of rubbish to do any of what is there. Yeah. And then you know, yeah, yeah, people expect the microtransactions to come out, but Fallout seventy six has been way worse than that. That was a disaster, and if it's on the the list and Anthem's not, I mean that's bad. I mean, Fallout 76 doesn't deserve to be on that list. So if it's beating Anthem to a place... Yeah. But when... Well, how many... How often is the list actually updated, if you don't mind me asking? Do you know? No, but I would... I think it's pretty... I think it's automatic. I think it's pretty quick. The refresh rate would be pretty high because of the fact that um, it's all digital information they have access to. Oh, okay. Right, yeah. So yeah, that's kind of disappointing for Anthem. Shall we move on to the next story? Because the sun's now come out. It's getting quite hot again. Yeah. Uh, the only other thing I would say about that is that I don't really know what they can possibly do to fix it because the players, the hardcore players, seem to have abandoned it. Yeah, because if there were hardcore players, it would still be on that list. Yeah. Next story we have for you is regarding the CEO of THQ Nordic when he was asked about Metro Exodus sales. And he said that it was very good for consoles, but he was extremely vague uh, or specific, I suppose would be another way of putting it, when it came to his answer for the, the PC. Now, this is in light of the fact that they made uh, Metro Exit or Metro Exit, sorry, was made by the publisher, not the developer, uh, an Epic Games exclusive for the PC. Um, now, Epic seems to have been a success for Metro Exodus and another THQ game, I think it's a THQ game, Satisfactory. Um, stated that they've made, uh, they've hit their targets or exceeded them. The weird wording, the very specific wording of the answers suggests that they might, they think they might have done better if they'd remained on Steam. Now, as big a success as they were, they could have been slightly bigger. Um, and his specific answers were about revenue as opposed to unit sales. So I think they might have not done what they wanted with unit sales, but hit their revenue because of the revenue sharing that Epic has. Right. So I think that that might be part of his answer. Is yeah. that That's why he's been so specific about it, is that they think they might have done better if they remained on Steam. Okay. Um, well, I suppose I can kind of understand that, because uh, so Epic, not many people still, I don't think, use Epic games. A lot of people still use Steam, though. For people who are not game enthusiasts, but like to play certain games they won't really know about epic games because i don't know about epic, the epic game store uh, yeah i agree but i also think that um it's the people who who are the hardcore gamers who don't want to shop at epic because they just think it's a uh, the phrase i'd use is nonsense talk that it's it's not safe it's not a good game client to use it's just not what you want to be doing because if you're a hardcore gamer you're going to turn to steam because it's worth the extra money as it were but it's and if you're a as you just said a new gamer you might not know about epic yeah so it's that's probably what's cost them okay the controversy might have allowed to people that they need to go to epic but that just means a lot of people would have just refused Mm -hmm. so i don't think it helped no shall we move on well, this story actually links to the last one. Have you heard of GOG Galaxy 2.0? I did not until I looked up the story. For a very long time, I thought you were talking about Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardian of Galaxy Galaxy. Yeah, again, dyslexic. Guardians of G-Galaxy? Guardians of Or Galaxy G. I, I thought it was something about that. Guardians of G-Galaxy. I, did, I thought it was something about that. Obviously, I was wrong. Okay. Um, so... I think it's a creation by CD Projekt. It links all the current game clients together. That's the objective. It's being constructed at the minute, but that's the objective. That it, it links all 
of the current game clients together so that all your information is linked to your libraries all in one place. And when it comes to computer games, you should be able to just play them all off the one game client. Yeah. But it can also, uh, there'll be some platform integration as well. Now, you won't be able to play a PlayStation or Xbox game because the way that they work, you, you would need to have the console. Yeah. But you will be able to look at your profile content, so it should link all the achievements and trophies and such like and whatnot that you've got. And mm -hmm. it'll be able to tell you what your digital library consists of. But it might make it so that if you have a, an Xbox game, um, you know, like Halo Wars 2, is, you can play it on the PC and on the Xbox. Yeah. Apparently, this is possible due to Galaxy's open-ended nature, which allows for user-made extensions. So, basically, uh, one of the reasons that they'll be able to include so much is because they, they, um, they've built it to be expandable and extendable, but they've also built it so that people can make their own stuff, like, modify it almost. So, that way, it will be able to include everything and link everything. Yeah. Um... Because apparently you can now sign up for a closed beta test of it. Really? Yeah. Nice. I saw one article that said that. Um, so but they... you can only do it if you've got a GOG account. Yes, but the GOG account is free. Yeah, but I'm just saying that Aye, that's yeah. the only way you can sign up for it. Um, so the, it's very security heavy. Uh, Galaxy will only import data that is required to link a person's client accounts. If that link is removed, then the data specific to it is deleted and there is no third-party sharing of data. So the developers will be very open about everything so that people can see how the system works if they're worried about security concerns and also make add-ons themselves, like I said. Uh, the potential benefit here is that games on this client's, um, specifically on this client, will be more likely to sell more. In other words, that's why they're making, they're going to the bother of actually creating this link system. Yeah. Because they'll be able to sell their games from this. So if everybody uses it, they're more likely to sell more. Right. Um, if they're seen by more people, which obviously they will be if they make this work, because everybody will use it. Um, that in turn means that other game clients have no reason to help them, though, because they are in turn less likely to sell their games. We might see which game developers, sorry, publishers are, are interested in gamers benefit and which ones aren't here. Yeah, well, it's good that, um, that there's like a system now that's uh, to really, truly protect your privacy. Yeah, because with the open nature yeah, of you it... Yeah, you can, you can choose to delete any data that you incorporate, that you put into it, can't you? Mm -hmm. Yes. Because it's not an automatic thing. You can opt into that, or you can keep it, or you can keep your data on there, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's, but it also, they open up the, and it's the coding so that you can see... People who know this thing in the public can say... <gasps> yeah. I know what this is doing, um, so this is okay. Shall we move on to the next story then? Yeah, so this is a bit of a, a catch-up on last week's COD story that we spoke about. Um, it was Treyarch that's been moved on to the 2020 COD, not Infinity Ward. Yeah. I couldn't remember last week. Um, now, they released Black Ops 4 in 2018. Yes. I'm pretty sure Infinity Ward did things like Infinite Warfare and stuff yeah. like that. Um so that means that they will only have two years to make the 2020 game. And there, I, I got confused, uh, but the reason is the reason they only have two years is, is not because they have to make their own game after this, uh, which is why I thought it was Infinity Ward. You know, they helped during nine, 2019, mm -hmm. leave the development end off with someone else, and then they do 2020, 2021 on their game. Yeah. But no, it's because they're only getting two years because they're only getting 2019 and 2020 to make the 2020 game. The only reason that the reason they're only getting two years to 2020 is because they're making the single player, and Raven and Sledgehammer, who were originally making it, have been relegated to a support role for Treyarch. Yeah. And their original Cold War story is to replace with a sto uh, a Treyarch story for Black Ops Five. Mm -hmm. So it is a sequel to Black Ops. So that's why they're only getting two years to make right. Black Ops Five. Well, I think it's either this, the next Call of Duty game that's going to be released or it's this one that you're talking about i don't know actually know for certain which one it is but one of them is going to be called modern warfare this was leaked by a youtuber called long sensation i think he's one of the influencers that's been invited along to have a look at what's up right. what, what's up and coming so i wouldn't call that a leak then if he's be oh, do you mean, do you it mean is he's... a leak because he's not supposed to have said oh he's it. not supposed to have said it right okay okay i think that's what it is because everybody's just saying he leaks it right um, 
or it could have been a controlled leak. They might be making out he wasn't supposed to say it. Quite possibly. But the thing is, that's been the suspicion, pardon me for using a word that's not real, for quite a while. Right. And it would be Codern, it would be modern, Codern, I keep saying Codern, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 4. Right, well, uh, he just said it was called Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Well, I suppose it's possible because the original Modern Warfare was called Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. So they could call it Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Technically, it wouldn't be the same name. Yeah. But I'm not entirely sure if they would get away with that. Right. But then, of course, you've got the issue if you put the 4 in, you've got Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare and then Call of Duty Modern Warfare 4. So they've got a tricky one there either way. Very confusing. Shall we move on? No. Um, because it's not this game in 2019. Uh, it's the 2019 game because it's made by Infinity Ward. 2020's COD is made by Treyarch and will be Black Ops 5 or something like that. So that's this year's Call of Duty that we're going Okay, my apologies. I thought that this was um, in relation to that. Now, can we move on, please? Yes. So Thank the, you. The last story, I've picked this last because it's a bit of a cheery one. Capcom's new engine, the RE engine, which was used to make Resident Evil's, well, I think it's been the 7 and 2 would be the big ones, the remake for 2, has been stated by Capcom to be a big strength for upcoming games that they're developing. Now, this is where it gets interesting, um, or it gets, sorry, it gets to be a good uh, piece of news, that the developers agree because it is a robust system with flexibility. Yeah. Because this was the system that was used to uh, build Resident Evil 7, the remake of Resident Evil 2, and Devil May Cry 5. Yes, and they all look and play very, very well. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and I think that this is basically a slap in the face to EA. <laughs> because their Frostbite engine is, by comparison, considered to be the worst thing. Pe developers will leave their jobs so that they can um, stop working with Frostbite. Yeah, it's the bane of their existence, and yet they for EA force everybody who develops a game for them to use that engine. Yeah, for reasons I can't. It might have something to do with EA access, maybe, but I'm not entirely sure. Yeah. What? But they force everybody to use that, and it's a terrible idea because it's a terrible system. Yeah. So anyway, they're going to be uh, using this new kind of engine, and hopefully, it's going to produce some really, really great games with it. But they have not yet said how many games they are actually going to make this with. Yeah. But and if not announced when the next game that's going to be using this engine will be released. Yes, but a game engine will last a long time. And I, I understand yeah. that, but I'm just saying that they've not... Yeah, we don't know what's coming. We don't know when, when it's coming, what form it's going to be coming in. Yeah. But... But yeah. that sounds good. Yes. That they're that proud of the engine and it works that well. Very good. Because one of the big problems that we've stated since the beginning of this, or one of the pieces of information I was able to give you, is that... Game engine development is something that a lot of companies sorely need to do. Especially Bethesda, because their game engine is terrible. I think they're making a new game engine for Starfield and uh, Elder Scrolls 6, and I'm very happy about that, because there's no way that game engine they had could have made good games. So, that's all we have for you today. That is everything. We hope you've enjoyed listening to us while we slowly get very sleepy while the sun has now come out. Yeah. Um, yeah I dressed for freezing weather, because it was raining and very cold when I... Uh, came in today. I'm in shorts and t-shirt because I'm a maverick. That's I'm just not. The way I run. But I'm still baking, so it's quite bad. So if you'd like to subscribe to our channel, that'd be absolutely fantastic. You can hit that little notification bell for when we inevitably end up uploading on a Wednesday. Always on a Wednesday. Never any other day. Other times, but other days. Mm. We yeah. don't have a consistent hour to upload, time to upload. It's just any time on a Wednesday. Yes. A Scottish mean time. Yeah. Um, um, if you'd like to leave a comment below, that'd be absolutely fantastic. Uh, you can... Like the video. Like the video, that would also be great. You can find us on Facebook at overshadow.shadowcast. You can email us at overshadow.shadowcast at gmail.com. All the links and everything is going to be left in the little description box down below. Please send an email because nobody has yet and it's getting lonely monitoring that box. Yes, please. Well, we hope you've enjoyed it. So I will say goodbye. And will you say goodbye, Tommy? Bye bye.